Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I frequently get asked questions about rainwater and how I store it and how I keep it from getting stagnant or just nasty. Now, rainwater can actually store for quite a long time in a dark place without needing any extra care. Now I think I'm up to about 30 jugs of rainwater and I always store it in glass jugs. So this is the filtered rainwater. Now we will eventually, I know I've been promising it for a long time, do a separate video just on our rainwater collection. But I will share with you a few pictures here. Um, we just have a very cheap setup. The cheapest you can go to set up for filtering your rainwater and that is just a couple of plastic buckets and yes I know plastic is not the best but the rainwater does not sit in there for very long because I'm always filtering through it every single day I'm going through it and then storing it in the glass jug so it's a bucket with the Berkey filter on the inside just one just basic Berkey filter we just get the basic ones we don't since we're filtering our rainwater we don't need to filter out fluoride so we don't need the extra fluoride filter and then that bucket sits on top of another bucket that Patrick drilled a hole in the lid to and then the bottom bucket collects the filtered rainwater and from there we pour it from a spout that he installed into the bucket into the glass jug. So every day I'm going through at least one or two gallons of rainwater daily because that's what that's all we use for cooking, making our coffee or tea, any, anything that we're going to consume we use our rainwater and then I rotate all of the jugs so you can see in the picture I have quite a few jugs sitting in the shed this is the same shed that holds our our solar power battery bank and you can also see in this picture that we have a reverse osmosis setup and Patrick has used it a couple of times the problem with reverse osmosis is that you end up having to go through quite a bit of water to get the purified water but you can also take the water that gets flushed out um, in the reverse osmosis and use that for water in your garden as well but typically we just stick with the Berkey method I'll go ahead and link to the filters I use below because I get a pretty good price on a package of four through Amazon and the other place I store it is in a closet that also holds my apron so you'll see in this photo a whole bunch of my apron strings hanging down but there's quite a few I think there's like 13 gallons of rainwater just sitting there in that closet and then I keep a couple more stored in other places now how do you keep it from going stagnant well obviously rotating it daily is going to help with that but I also have a few gallons that I keep tucked away in other places that I tend to forget about but they're stored in a dark place as long as there's not any light getting into the water you do not have to worry about the water growing algae or anything like that and it should stay good for a very long time I still recommend rotating through it occasionally but another thing you can do if you're wanting to put it away for like a long-term storage is you can use some colloidal silver now on this bottle yes this is a recycled um, sparkling cider bottle my son loves this stuff and every time he buys it he brings the empty bottles over to me <laughs> and we wash them out and, and then I use them to store the colloidal silver because they're a nice dark bottle and that's what you want to store your colloidal silver in so this is homemade colloidal silver we do I do have a video I did when I first started my channel it's not a great video but I'll go ahead and link to it right up here I just show you how I make it but I don't show how the how Pat made the generator itself so one of these days he'll get around to doing a video on how he put together the generator but for those who understand a little bit about electronics and stuff like that you should be able to tell by that video get an idea of how he's got it set up with those batteries that we keep charged with a solar panel so anyway you can take your colloidal silver and I never measured it I would say an eighth to a quarter cup of colloidal silver into your jug into your gallon jug of water is also going to help keep it uh, from going bad for a very long time so right here what I have is a stainless steel bottle these are what we always keep in our rigs we keep you know two or three of these in each rig especially if we know we're going to go anywhere 
but I always have them in there like all the time and all I do is I put in our filtered rainwater and then I put a little bit of colloidal silver in there and you need to make sure it is a stainless steel bottle not plastic when we've had to use these on the road the water tastes just as fresh as the day I put it in there and it's the colloidal silver does a lot to keep it uh, keep it from growing algae keep it tasting good and all that kind of stuff so I recommend this I also have a video out on colloidal silver and I think colloidal copper I talk about both of them and I will link to that right up here I talk about the ways that we use these things and uh, it's really it's really good idea to learn how to make your own now you can see a lot of videos there's so much controversy of what's the right way to make colloidal silver what I say the right way is the way that works for you both in the making of it <laughs> and in the using of it. We've had really good results with our colloidal silver as is. I put it in the chicken's water, the dog's water, it helps keep their water pure and clean as well as they're getting those good uh, antibiotics, natural antibiotics from the colloidal silver into their body. So the same happens when you're adding it to your jugs. Now the reason I don't add the colloidal silver to all my jugs of water all the time is because I have found that when I've done that it seems to really slow down uh, any ferments that I might be doing. Now I don't do a lot of fermenting like people think I do a lot of fermenting. I really don't. I just ferment a few things here and there. Uh, some of it is for the sake of, of ease like fermenting uh, hard boiled eggs and fermenting garlic so that when I need them they're there, they're preserved in the fridge, they're ready to go and I can just pull it out and use it. But I don't like to use the water that I've added colloidal silver to when I'm doing the ferments because it seems to really slow it down and even sometimes prevent it from from doing anything and and that could probably be attributed to the natural antibiotic properties of the colloidal silver. So that is how I do that. I, I rotate and then anything that's going to sit in long-term storage especially in a hot place I store in stainless steel or glass and you know especially in the car I like to use stainless steel because that's going to keep the light out um, and then the colloidal silver to make it last for quite a long time. So I hope that helps answer a few questions and again I'm sorry it's taken us so long to get around to doing a video on how to make your own colloidal silver generator. It's just a matter of A remembering and B making the time to do it because we're both really really busy around here. Just be patient with us we'll get there eventually. Uh, we still have tons of different videos that we're working on as well and we're keeping keeping them coming out to you and hoping to help people get on a more natural uh, self-sustainable path of taking care of themselves, their family and your health and being more frugal and all that kind of stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching, take care, and God bless.